were playing in a place that was, you know, pretty hot little bar in on uh, Madison Avenue in, in Memphis. Uh, it was called the High Roller, and um, uh, the police even played there, uh, which is outrageous to me because it, Roxanne was out. It was a hit, and they were still playing small venues like that. Um, I think Stink was a Stink. <laughs> stinky. I used to call him Stinky. Oh. You know, I, I I met them backstage too. Also, my my girlfriend worked for a, an, another promoter in Memphis, and he called her up one day. And her name was Kristen. He, he wanted to know if Kristen would go to uh, go to. Let's see, which auditorium was this in? Was it in the Pyramid then, or was it in? A, I think it was in what they called North Hall Auditorium. It's downtown. And the police were playing, and um, I said, shite, really? And uh, he said, yeah, and uh, Eddie Scruggs wanted me to put together a, you know, a, you know, a backstage uh, cold, cold cut plate for them. I said, you're kidding. You're going to take a cold cut to the police? Jeez. I said, well, get the good stuff, whatever you do. Of course... He didn't give a, he gave her like, you know, five, six dollars. That was all he gave her. You can't buy anything for that, even then. So anyway, she made the cold cut plate and then we drove down there, you know, well before the show and went backstage because we, we could. Um, I don't remember. I think we had passes of some sort. And uh, they had a tiny little dressing room and I was, you know, I was close enough to throw a piece of, cold cut you know to sting and andy summers and uh and the drummer whose name escapes me right now uh remember his name his uh, brother I, was uh Copeland. yeah Stuart their Copeland. road manager at that time um yeah Stuart copeland I don't know. eric yeah copeland that's it Anyway, I was right there in the room with them, and it, it, it was funny. It was just, you know, it was, it's funny. She was handing the cold cuts to them, and I was just kind of watching. But I kind of stood away from her in case they really had, <laughs> had a lot of criticism about the cold cuts, so they wouldn't associate me with the cold cuts. <laughs> I didn't want to be, be lump, lumped in with the with the meat. Uh -huh. And so, and so then, back to Jerry Lee, if you like. Back to Jerry Lee, Lewis. So, um, we were we were playing this place. Uh, like I said, they police played there. We uh, a lot of big acts played there. The Romantics, you may remember them. They were pretty got pretty big. They had a hit record. They played there. Um, um, we used to open for a lot of big people. We we would get that. I, I'm not sure why. I guess it, I started out that way. You know, my first Coliseum uh, was for the Vanilla Fudge when they had that huge hit that was that Supreme song, uh, Keep Me Hanging On. You remember that? Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was a huge hit, and the Coliseum was packed, and Thomas Edison opened for them. Wow, that that's, was, early. that's early. That was on. my first view of a coliseum was opening for them i'll tell you about that gig another time we had a lot of fun on that one but uh back at uh high roller with jerry lee jerry lee comes in he always had an entourage uh he had a uh he had a guy acted like a road manager um and he paid him um his name escapes me right now, but he's in, he's on my Facebook page. He wrote to me and wanted me to to call him. And I, you know, he's, he's some years old, at least 25 years older now. And I don't know. I was just, uh, I was just leery about him because, because of the, you know, Jerry Lee was a dangerous man. You know, some of the stories. So right. He was yeah. very, he was very dangerous. And so that night, we did this song called Girls Get Sleepy, and I'd go nuts on it. You know, it, punk rock was still big and, you know, edgy new wave. And we, we got real edgy, and 
We're doing all kinds of things. I had a breakaway bottle I used to get broken over my head, a breakaway wine bottle. People, nobody knew Holly would have those breakaway bottles, you know, but I did. So we were doing things like that and getting them sent to us so we could we could do the breakaway bottle over each other's heads and stuff. And people would just freak, you know, because it looks real. Anyway, we were doing that kind of thing. We were doing this, uh, uh, it's a pretty decent rock song called Girls Get Sleepy. And um, uh, I could still do it today. It, it, I think it still holds merit. But um, um, when we do the song, you know, I get down where I, I'm, I'm starting to go crazy on the vocals, you know, screaming that girls get creepy when girls get sleepy, yada, yada, yada. And, uh, um, I ended up falling down off the stage. I fall off the stage with the microphone and I get to the floor and had that less ball then, you know, protect me and the less ball would, would kind of break my fall. And, and, uh, I'd fallen off the stage onto the like dance floor. There, there, wasn't, there wasn't anybody dancing, but, but, uh, Jerry Lee was back there and, I should uh, preface this with whilst we were playing the first set and then we would save that one for the last, the second set or and the third set. Right. And uh, Jerry, while Jerry Lee was back there, boy, you know, he'd walk in. He'd walk in with a, uh, you know, a case of, I mean, a, not a case, a bottle of scotch or a bottle of whiskey, you know, and didn't think anything of it. Didn't matter that it was illegal. It's Jerry Lee Lewis. He did anything he wanted to. Yeah. So he'd just walk in. He had a be- real pretty beautiful winter coat so it was in the winter and he walked in there and he came in with a couple of girls and uh, I swear to you I'm not making this up within uh, within uh, an hour and a half he'd gotten into fights with both of those girls at that table and you know nobody was looking at us because they were all looking at Jerry Lee and what was going on back in the back of the room and he'd get into fights and the girls would get so mad they'd pick up glasses and throw them at him. And I mean, it was, it was quite a show. <laughs> and uh, we were nowhere near as exciting. And so um, we watched, uh, you know, he had his his, uh, his crew with him and that guy that I was telling you about. And, you know, we saw the first girl picked up by her, both her hands and her feet and drug out of the, of the place, you know, like on all at all fours, you know. Two guys had, had her arms and the other two had her legs and she sprawled and they're, they're carrying her out the door to get her away from Jerry Lee so he doesn't kill her or, you know, or she doesn't get killed. You know? Vice versa, yeah. So that was the first one. And then I swear, in like 30 minutes of the next set, he got into another fight with the other girl. And then the whole the whole routine started all over again. So... I don't know if this is one of Jerry Lee's bad nights or one of his good <laughs> nights, you know. I really I'm not sure what he how he would judge. He probably didn't judge at all because he'd have so much to drink, you know. Yeah. And uh he just didn't have any judgment. He just did what he did, you know. So anyway, I do girls get sleepy and then I think we yeah, we finished we finished the night with it. We hadn't done it, so it must have been the third set. And um uh, so I do my whole routine on the floor, and you know I'd have to do it to know what I do. I don't remember what I did. <laughs> and then I'd stand up and I'd run back to the stage and leap back on top of it, and end it on that stinger right at the very end. Yeah, man, Jerry Lee goes nuts. He starts screaming, "How you gonna follow that? How you gonna follow that? You can't follow that. How you gonna follow that?" And he's just screaming and waving his arms and. Oh my God, he's coming towards me. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I got to get back to the dressing room, you know? And so I go around the curtains and I go back there. He follows me back there. And he just goes nuts. And the whole time I'm just thinking, he's got a gun in his pocket. I know he might have two, you know? <laughs> and I'm thinking, if he, if he didn't like it because he liked it too much, he might shoot me just for doing it, you know, because it was good, you know, and it and it bothered him. But the you know the road manager brought him in because he said this this band you got to see it because it really was a great band. It was Steve Merrigan on drums, and uh, I know you don't know him, but um, you know those live uh, those live that live show you've you've heard some of those, right? right. It was it was that group. Um, 
I didn't have Tommy Priakis yet. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, Tommy's great. So he comes back there, man. He just starts raving about all over me, and I'm, I'm going like, <laughs> I'm going like, well, Mister Jerry, Mister Lewis, can I call you Jerry? <laughs> Don't you mind? He goes, show up, boy, and he puts his arm around me, and I'm like, oh my god. Now he's got me close enough to shoot me in the fucking head, you know. And uh, I mean, I really was concerned. I really was, because you know I knew he was really drunk. And uh, you know, one wrong word, you know, he shot his bass player at his house, you know, because he said something. And uh, I never forgot that. And he didn't go to jail for it either, because the bass player didn't press charges. So that's all I could think about. <laughs> <laughs> how scary that was but anyway all went well and he uh he just congratulated wanted to shake my hand and said man i'm gonna come see you again and i knew he wouldn't remember anything he said you know but uh that's what happened and it, it was really scary it was a scary night but it ended it ended uh scarily uh interesting like that <laughs> wow. so that's my jerry lee lewis story that's awesome. Wow.